Thank you for listening to another episode of Pin the Q Podcast. We're preserving the culture and traditions of the fire service is our priority. For more information, visit www.pintheq.com and subscribe to Pin the Q Productions on YouTube. It's our honor to showcase the best of the bravest. Everyone, welcome back to Pindicu Productions, Pindicu Podcast. And we are in Maryland, and we are in Hunting, Hunting Town, Hunting Town, Maryland, which is pretty cool. <laughs> we we were like four times I screwed up the name. Yeah, yeah, you're yeah batting a thousand. I'm batting a thousand on the name, but it's uh, Hunting Town, Hunting Town. Now I remembered it. There you go. So Good. that's taught good. you something. Yeah, so I learned something today. It's Hunting Town. Yeah, but when you look at it, it kind of deceives the eyes. Yeah, you, it, it'll it'll catch you. A little tongue tie. So we are in Maryland, and uh, turns out to be a pretty nice day. Mm-hmm. So, brother, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Uh, before we go too much further, why don't you introduce yourself and tell everyone who you are? My name is Mike Nasty. I'm a lieutenant with the Prince George's County Fire Department. Uh, I got my humble start here at Huntingtown Volunteer Fire Department. So you said it right. There you go. Um, I started here back in 2002, I believe. Um, spent a long time here. Ended up getting hired in Prince George's County in 2007. Um, still volunteered here while I worked in the county. Um, and I ended up, uh, I guess, parting ways, in, I think, around 2013 or 14. What's it like for you to be back in this house? A lot of interesting memories come up. Uh, a lot of old faces that I haven't seen in a while. Um, reconnecting, but, you know, it's... I spent a good part of my life here. And I learned a lot of things. And... You know, met a lot of good people, a lot of life experience, and, it, you know, you come back and it kind of feels like you never left. Right. Like, you know what I mean? You come back and, you know, we were talking in the parking lot, welcoming. Guys I haven't seen in years, you, you know, like, it's like I just saw them last week. It was it was nice. It was real nice. I, I love doing episodes like this where, you know, I ask guests, where would you like to do it? And they always want to start where they started. Yeah. You know, and, yes. I, and I think that what a great start to a podcast, but in the actual place you started. Yeah. Uh, I think it brings it back home for a lot of people and I know full circle almost yeah when you and I were talking off camera you mentioned that to me that this you know please me this place means a lot to you mm-hmm. um and you'd like to film here and, and I thought it was cool because again you can't can't be anything better than that I mean you're, yeah. you're starting where you're starting you know yeah, yeah. it's like Absolutely. you're telling your story but at the beginning yeah and it's like you're, it's almost like it feels like a homecoming I guess yeah. is a good way to say it you know it no matter where you go no matter you know what you do in your life when you come home you feel comfortable definitely feel safe you know, it's home. Like, yeah, absolutely. You just, you feel it. Like, you know what I mean? Like you are home and it's, it's a nice feeling. So let's talk about that, man. Uh, why sure. don't you bring me back to your humble beginnings? Just tell me what that was like for you. Yeah. So I started back here in uh, 2002. I was, I just turned 16, I think, 16 years old. Um, got it, came up here, you know, you put your application in, they table you for a month is what they call it. So you start coming around, hanging out. And then, you know, you do a year of probation um, and then you get voted into being a full-fledged member. So, you know, I, you know, as a little kid, I've always wanted to be in the fire department. Yeah, and how impressionable are you at that age, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, you know, and it's funny because my, my dad was a cop. He's in the military. You know, my grandfather was a school teacher. He was in the Marine Corps. Um, you know, my mom was a stay-at-home mom. And, you know, my aunts and uncles, they had, you know, whatever jobs. Or not whatever jobs, but they had, you know, normal jobs. They, didn't have, they weren't in public safety okay. or anything like that. right. And, you know, at a young age, it's all I wanted to do. You, you know what I mean? Like, I was always that kid. It's all I wanted. Like, it, you know, I was obsessed with backdraft. It came out <laughs> in 91, I think, right when everything kind of clicked of, right, right. oh, my God. Like, this is it. This is what I want to be. It's possible because these other people are doing it. Right. You know what I mean? So, yeah, I mean, that's kind of where it started. You know, just being a kid, I got 
backdraft every year on VHS because I would always like fast forward and rewind or watch it or whatever. And I would absolutely destroy it. I was also a knucklehead, so I didn't really take that great care of things, unfortunately, back then. And, um, yeah, and it brought me here. I ended up figuring out where this firehouse was. I went to school with a kid, with a guy named Wayne Ward, and um, he always wore, like, Dunkirk Volunteer Fire Department shirts and or what D.C. Fire Department or whatever. And, you know, I remember talking to him. I don't – you know, I mean, it's, this is a long time ago. And through middle school and high school, it was warm. You know, I remember seeing the T-shirts and talking a little bit here and there. Oh, you know, cool. Like, where'd you get? Oh, my dad's in the fire department. My dad's, a, you know, my dad's the chief of Dunkirk or wherever he was the chief at. He works downtown at Squad 3. And, you know, I was like, oh, man, that's, you know, that's kind of cool. Yeah. And then throughout middle school and high school, he's wearing them still. And I'm like, you know, he, he's still wearing those shirts. Like, you, you know, that's kind of cool. Like, is he still the chief or whatever? And right. Then I started noticing, like, other kids were wearing T-shirts. And I'm like, Why do you, how do you guys get shirts like that? Like, do you all, like, are you, you know what I mean? Not, right, it wasn't right. anything like, you know, I'm not going up to people, how did you get your shirt? But, right, right. you know, it all kind of, over time came out that, oh, yeah, well, we volunteer at the firehouse. I'm like, what do you mean you volunteer? Well, yeah, we just we go hang out, and we're members there, and they, we go through training. And, you know, I was like, well, how? How do I do that? I want to do that. How, how, <laughs> like, you can do that now? Like, I thought you, I, I didn't, I didn't know that there was such thing as a volunteering. Like, because I didn't come from that background. Right. Like, like I said, my dad was a cop. He was in the military. Like, that, that was my upbringing. And, you know, I had no idea. As a kid, you just thinking, they yeah, got fired and when the I was, firehouse. And I was, when I was younger, you know, in Jersey and everything, they were all, everybody was, um, I thought were paid. Like I thought that was a job. Like right. you know what I mean. A lot of people say that they had no idea there was even volunteer. Yeah, I had yeah. I had no clue. I had no clue. And then it all kind of clicked. And then I remember ended up buying a car for a couple hundred dollars at a car dealership, which used to be right up here at the corner. And I remember going up there and I'm like driving by and I see a firehouse sitting here. I'm like, wait a minute. Like and then it all kind of clicked. I'm like, oh, I wonder, if, what if they like? I wonder if that's place like a giant. What if they have <laughs> volunteers? Right, right. And it said gigantic on the building. I'm like. I'm gonna try it, and I went in. The rest is history. Yeah. Now I'm here. Now, now we're sitting here. It's crazy. You know, however right? many years later, what yeah. is two? It's insane. How eighteen it, years how later, like that. Yeah, yeah. And just it, like that. In a blink flash. of an eye. Blink yeah. of an eye. Exactly. <laughs> just out of nowhere. And now you're a lieutenant. And now, now I'm a lieutenant. That's yeah, pretty cool. It, yeah, quite the journey. So tell me a little bit about that for you. So you're you're here as a volunteer. You're now you're developing all these relationships with these guys. I mean, and now you're forming this brotherhood, which starts so early on. Yeah. I know for me it did. I'm, I'm sure it's the same for you. Mm-hmm. So talk to me a little bit about those first experiences as a firefighter. Yeah. I mean, you know, you, you, sh- you show up, you know, you see all this gear and helmets and the radios going and all that. You're like, oh, that's kind of cool. And then, you know, you start meeting people and, you know, you're a little knucklehead teenager. <laughs> and they know yeah. you're young and impressionable and, in my case, a bonehead. And so they start teaching you. They're like, hey, you know, you can't just sit around. Don't sit around and watch TV. Like, you need to have a mop in your hand. You need, to, you need to, you know, clean and, you know, know these trucks. I mean, they were and beyond cleaning and all that stuff. Like, they were big on, you know, you shouldn't be sitting here. Because we didn't have cell phones then. Right. Don't watch TV. Don't read the newspaper. Don't mess with the pay phone. Because there used to be a pay phone in, before they <laughs> renovated it. Yeah. Don't mess with that. That's nothing but trouble. Yeah. Don't do this. Don't, like, you know what I mean? Yeah. You need to be out here getting your, you know, meet people, introduce yourself. If you don't know, if you see somebody you don't know, go introduce yourself. Get on this fire trucks, you know, open the compartments, go through the tools, ask questions, figure it out. Right. And they never really, if I remember right, they never really had like a formal book. Like you didn't get handed something and say, like a manual. these are your tasks. Right. It was all word of mouth, your reputation. So you had mentors. And mentors, yeah. So you had guys like, you know, this guy, John Rife, that was... Kind of took me under his wing a little bit. Uh, J, JT Borden, you know, good guys that really took me under their wing, were very hard on me. Gave yeah, we me know John, man. He was on the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Great you know, dude, man. Great guy. Yeah. Um, you know, he, he's, he's a good dude. He, um, you know, I think he is one of the pivotal people that got me to where I am, um, you know, personally and professionally. I, you know, he always pushed me, you know, and – he was he wasn't afraid to tell me if I was being a knucklehead. Yeah, but you need those people. Yeah, he, like you needed that that foot in your butt because yeah. you know I didn't. I mean, this is all I had. Right. Like, I, you know, I didn't have a home life. You know, my home life was 
I had a bit of a rough time, um, and I, I needed to leave. And I found this place. So you said in family. It, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, and it was one of those things that, you know, as corny as it sounds, like, I did sports in school. They were fun. Wasn't that great at them. You know, did, went through high school, finished high school, got, graduated, all that. But when I came here, you know, I was, it was the first place where I really felt like I was accepted. Right. Like, you know, like, I didn't have problems, like, socially or anything, but, you know, everybody's, oh, hey, how you doing? Like, everybody was nice. It was great. Like, I love coming here. Right. And I was starting to get better at it because I didn't have anything else. Like, I just hung out here. Right. And I started working on things, and I started doing things, and getting better and better. People started trusting me, and, you know, hey, man, you did a good job, and started running fires, and it felt like it was one of the only things that I was good at. And it all clicked, like, man, I got to do this for the rest of my life. Like, yeah. I'm going to hang out here all the time and <laughs> be a volunteer fireman in Huntingtown and have right. a great time. And, you know, I wasn't naive. to I didn't think there wasn't paid people, but, like, it never clicked that that could be a career. Right. Like, right. a very nice, humble, <laughs> yeah. good job. Yeah. I had no clue. And when it hit you, it's like, wow. Yeah. And then I remember. I like, can pay for this? Yeah. Like, John and yeah. JT and this guy, Carol Spriggs, who's another huge influence in my life and keeping me from being a bonehead more of a bonehead you know they're like yeah you know carol's like I, you know i work in annapolis full time like, you what can a, do this for a job what a cool city yeah he's like I, yeah he's like yeah man i you know did this for a while and then he became a sheriff for a little bit but then he went back to the fire department and i was like you, like for your job he's like yeah i was like <laughs> really and then i remember john talking to me about it. he's like yeah dude like I, it's like i work in ndw this can be a career for you. And it never clicked. Right. You know, I'm also kind of, you know, a knucklehead teenager. It just, I didn't think that way back then. You know, I never thought about what I'm going to do with my life. I was like, oh, I, I think here. a lot of guys though, and girls starting out doing this are like, yeah, this is it. I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. And, you know, until yeah. they realize like, oh, I can actually make a career out of this. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's not the same, but it is the same. Right. So, you know, the expectation level when you are a career firefighter is way mm -hmm. higher because, you know, again, this is your job, and, you know, people want to go home. Because when they go home, they don't have, the, sometimes, they don't have the volunteer firehouse. They have families yeah. and kids and bills, and they want to get home. So the expectation level is super high. So, Well, you talk to a lot of, you know, firefighters, career guys I talk to, obviously, with the show quite a bit. Yeah. And a lot of them will tell you, like, they're actually seeing more work with the volunteer departments because when they're on their shift, that's it. So yeah. when they're not working yeah. and there's fires, they're missing them. Yeah. But, you know, you know and that's frequency. Right, right. right. I mean, if you're, you know, you do your 48 hours a week, let's say, depending on your shift or whatever, whatever the shift work is or whatever your schedule is, you know, you're there 48 hours, mm -hmm. but you're here 50 hours or right. you live here. So the chances are greater. You're here 72 hours technically because you're here your three days off. Right. I mean, statistically, you should be running more fires because you're there. The exposure's there. So, and it's funny because I had a little bit of that when I first started and because I still volunteered then and I would leave my work and come here. You go to work and you're riding the ambulance, you know, because they had four guys assigned to a firehouse. And so if the ambulance goes on a call, the officer and the driver stay back. Right. Right. Or if there's an engine call and everybody's there, everybody goes, but you're responsible for the ambulance. Oof. And the ambulance is busy. Yeah, it's rough. It's, it's rough. always busy, It's man. It's rough, it's busy. busy, and it's not, you know, everybody wants to ride the fire trucks. Yeah. But... This is your job. Right. So you don't complain. You right. get on that ambulance and you ride it and it's job security because they need people there to provide a service. Mm -hmm. Suppression EMS, whatever it is, and that's your job. And, and, and nowadays, a lot of fire departments are doing EMS, man, because yeah. it's about survivability. Yeah. yeah, that and then, you know, the other thing, it's just, it was so ingrained when I got there that this is what we do. We run calls, regardless of what the call is. Well, they're doing EMS here, right? And they do EMS yeah, here, yeah, ambulance and you here. ride the ambulance here. Right, yeah, right. I forgot about that, actually. So, yeah, I mean, there's an ambulance here. There's two ambulances here, but, I mean, you know, this firehouse then, I don't know what they're doing numbers-wise, but then was, like, maybe a 1,000 calls. Maybe. I don't really remember. That's a lot. Too. It's a lot of calls. <laughs> it's a lot. But, you know, some places that where I work, I right. mean, one unit is hitting close to 3,000 calls. Right. Some firehouses are running, you know, nine, ten thousand 10,000 calls. Like, it's, 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 a, it's a heavy volume. So For a few years, I was working in the city of Newark, mm -hmm. and – like BLS truck, and I'm telling you, we get there, we wouldn't even have time to set up our truck half the time 
Yeah. And and we're already getting assignments. And yeah. it wasn't uncommon to do 17, yeah. 18 calls on the tour. Yeah. Yeah. And they're tough. But you know what, though? I, it burns you out, man. It burns you out. But, you know, it's at the end of the day, if you think about it, it's not where you want to be ideally. That's having those problems. Oh, man, the ambulance is busy today. It's way better than being like, I wish I had a fire department job. Right. Like, oh, you know absolutely. what I mean? Absolutely. Like, you yeah. know, like. If and, you put it in perspective, absolutely. Yeah. And it's, it, I mean, no one thinks like that when they're young. They it's good to hear you say that, though, because people need to hear that, you know, like, hey, uh, I'm going to offer the job, but I'm going to be in an ambulance for a few years. Okay. But, a, a, a friend of mine just got hired in Asbury Park, and and he's a good fireman. And, and I know he's a good fireman. Yeah. I watch him, but he, he's on an ambulance right now, and he, he so he, he has to embrace that. Yeah. And, and he said the same thing you said. He goes, I'm, it's okay. I'm yeah. I'm happy. I just got you the greatest a, job in the world. You got the greatest <laughs> job in the world. Yeah, and, I'm just and happy. Exactly. And, you know, right. it. again, like I said, it's not ideally where you want to be. But if you think about it in the grand aspect, which I never thought this went way when I was younger. Right. When I was younger, I was like, oh, I don't, oh man, I got to ride the ambulance. Yeah. But it was a little different for us because they were undedicated. So there was no rotation. There was no, you know, engine day, ambulance. There's no such thing as that because right. we didn't have the staffing back then in uh, 2007, 2008. <laughs> so it was always you rode what got the call. But, you know, and that's that's the whole thing about, Putting, like you said, putting it in perspective, it's kind of like, yeah, I mean, I got to ride the ambulance, but I also get three days off. So, you know, I remember somebody uh, on the job that was like, there's nothing they can do to you in 24 hours that you can't recover from. In three oh, days. absolutely. And, and you yeah. always got to remember, too, we talk about perspective. There's there's a hundred guys and girls behind you that are just yeah. waiting for you to screw up so they can get your job. Yeah, yeah. And you, know, you know, they're they're there, man. Yeah, and then you hear numbers like, I mean – I'm not really involved in the hiring process, but, you know, you hear numbers like, hey, man, we just did a test, and we had, like, 5,000 people show, or 5,000 applicants. Oh, absolutely, and, yeah. You know, however many people show up. Like, yeah. you hear those things, and you're like, oh, man, that's – and you know, the class could be 20 people, 40 people, 100, whatever the class sizes are. There's not a day goes by that I'm not thankful for the job I oh, have. Oh, absolutely. You know what I mean? Like, 100%. you see all these guys and girls trying to get on, and, and I feel for them because it's not easy. No. So when you, when you get your job, no. it's like – embrace it and, and you know yeah, be yeah. thankful <laughs> yeah especially like you know it's so hard to get in yeah. like and the, the, we're in the dc metro area so i feel like the jobs just in general are more prevalent here fire department wise a lot of people from jersey public. come to maryland to get work a ton of people yeah do. yeah and you know but if you go out somewhere out west like you listen to some of those guys talk or you know wherever it is you, you know however you interact with people that you know you hear those stories you know they're on lists for years. Oh yeah, you, you know what I mean. They go work wildland and then try and switch over, or they'll go. They'll be cops, and then try and switch over. Like a friend of mine, he works in Houston, and he worked in Houston as a cop for eight years, and then was finally able to come over. In that eight years, works. he was trying to get on the fire department. Trying to get in the wow. fire department. Yeah, and it finally and it took him. It took him eight years. That's awesome. Like you know what I mean. And I mean it was it was worth it. But he got into the city. You know, however that system works. I don't know how it works, but. You know, it's it's not easy. You know, and but he stayed consistent. You know, and he, he, I mean, he wanted it. Yeah, if right. you want something bad enough, you're going to do it. That's a great example. Yeah, <laughs> perseverance. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Eight years, and you still keep grinding for it. You know, I don't. Yeah. And especially after eight years, you think like you are pretty in, engulfed into the culture of the PD. Like you're not going to leave. But yeah, yeah. It just yeah. shows you how bad he wanted and, it, and that's just what he wanted. Yeah. yeah. And now he, I mean, he, he loves it. He loves his job, and you know, there's. I think it's just like anywhere else. They're going through a rough time with oh, yeah. you know, it's, everything going on. But Man, right now it's a terrible time to be a cop. It's it's crazy out there. It, it is crazy out there. Yeah, I was thinking more the pandemic, like with the pandemic jobs and, you know, budgets and all that. And I'm is, talking about the climate it's, out it's, there. It's rough. It's a difficult time, I think, to, yeah. to do those things. And, and I think, you know, again, any day in a crappy mm -hmm. job that you love or crappy situation in a job you love. Right. Is better than wanting to do it, like yeah, you know what I mean. Full. Like it's like, oh man, yeah. It really sucks that we have to do inspections today, or we have to do whatever. And then you think about it, you're like, man, I could wanting to be doing I, inspections on the outside, looking <laughs> yeah, in. Yeah, like you know, or wh whatever, whatever it is that you don't want to do. Absolutely. You know, you're like, oh, you know, this is tough. I don't feel like doing whatever it is. It's hundred degrees outside. Well, there's a guy digging a digging a ditch. Yeah. 100 degrees outside, wishing he was sweating profusely. Yeah, yeah. And, <laughs> and you're getting ready to make supper. And you're just hanging out. Right, right. And, you know, doing whatever you're doing that's productive for that day at work. Bro, take me, take me back to PG, how that all happened. So, 
again, like the guy I mentioned, his name was Wayne Ward. Um, you know, I applied a, a bunch of times, and I applied, took the written test, and didn't hear anything. And it's a two-year list, and if I remember correctly, don't quote me on this, we were at the end of the list. Not the dead dead end, but, like, we were probably about a year and a half into the qualification or, like, the life of the list. Okay. And So now you're thinking, man, i got to go through a whole process again. Yeah, I'm like, oh, man, it's been almost two years. The list is going to expire. I was like, man, I'm not going to That's gonna, the worst, man, waiting on the list. You, you know what I mean? Yeah, and I was working in the electric union and learning to do – um, to be a journeyman's electrician and getting ready to start the school, the electrician school. And I was like, man, I'm not going to get hired. This is crap. Like yeah. I, okay. Well, yeah, it's like definitely disappointing. I'll just be an electrician the rest of my life and I'll do this as a hobby or, you know, as my fix. And so they called me and they're like, hey, you know, we need to do your um, background. We need to do this, this, and this. And they gave me a, a somewhat a rough timeline so you're like, okay something's cool. happening now the man. ball's yeah. rolling right we're right. starting right that was like january maybe february ish well, i didn't hear anything and then i didn't hear anything and i was like well i guess i'm not getting hired it's like this sucks and then i randomly got a phone call and what i ended up finding out was this guy wayne was leaving to go to dc and when he went in to turn his paperwork into you know to part with the department he was like, hey, you know, you know any of these guys? He's like, uh, I know him. I know Mike Nasty. I know that guy. And then he called me. So I got a call at 2 o'clock in the afternoon on a Tuesday. Hey, do you still want this job? Yeah. All right, cool. You need to start the academy tomorrow morning, 7 a.m. Click. <laughs> Roger that. Like, Whatever it takes. <laughs> all right. I guess, I guess I'm going to the academy. And, you know, everything, everything just kind of went through how, you know, how it worked out. And Isn't it amazing, like, you tell me that story, and, and I'm thinking, man, this this is how awesome the fire service is because those connections, that network. Yeah, yeah, it was totally random, and I met yeah. him through school and here. Like, right. he was over, I think, North Beach, and we'd run calls together, and I knew him from high school, you know, nice guy. Hung out, run calls with him, hey, Wayne, how you doing, whatever. That's cool. And it was just, and he wasn't, he was, I, you know, he was a friend, but. Like, I didn't think he knew me like that to say something. You know, I'd just be like, oh, yeah, I met that guy. You know, well, somewhere I, along the way, you some, did something. I, I, I guess. Yeah. You know, I, I think he's just a good guy. That's cool. what I think it was, and I think he was like how I know him. And he, you know, it's funny. He that did the good thing. You owe him, man. That's It's crazy. Yeah. It's yeah. crazy. Yeah, and, you know, and we ended up, you know, working together. That's cool. Um, or not working together. We ended up working for the same department just back to back. You know, he, he left and I parted. But I only or he left and I started. And the only reason why I started is because of him. That's cool. That's, yeah, that's, that's cool. It's a nice little way for it to start. And it's, Definitely, he's a good dude. So now, tell me what it was like for you because I'm assuming you're going right to the academy, right? We the next to, day. Yeah, walk in the academy. What was that like? I remember everything was a big whirlwind. It all went 100 miles an hour. Because part of you's got to be like, I got this, you know, I'm on the fire department. Oh, man. Yeah, so here I come walking in. I mean, Huntingtown, so now you're going oh. there. It's like, you got that. I got this. <laughs> yeah. Walk in this punk, uh, 19 or 20, whatever it was, punk. Know everything. Know everything. <laughs> and my attitude, if any of these guys that you, you know, any of these guys that know me, they know I am a bona fide knucklehead, <laughs> especially back then. You know, I walk in, I'm like, man, I got this. Like, I got to pull hand lines. Yeah. I, I, you know, I've gone fires, uh, you know, all this stuff. You know, I got my Mifri classes. Like, I can, you know, cut cars. Yeah. Meanwhile, matters. they're looking at you going, they don't care. And the <laughs> biggest lesson I learned was how much I didn't know. Oh, yeah. And looking back, I wish I knew then what I knew now. Don't we say, all? what did I just get myself <laughs> don't we into? All? Right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, and I was like, oh, man, I'm such a moron. Like, oh, my God. <laughs> you know, I'm going to be a smart ass and, you know, whatever. And first day, bam. Like, and, you know, the academy – had its own structure, you know, I, 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 had, I remember they did everything for a reason, right? you know, kind of thing, and, you know, they had guys that just broke us in, you, you know, um, we had, you know, lead instructor, we had a couple of firefighters that were instructors, and we had a lieutenant and a captain of the academy, and we, we also had, at that time, they were majors, but they're assistant chiefs, so you never saw the major very often. You don't want to see the major. You don't want to see the major, right. and good dude, by the way. Yeah, uh, it's, um, Victor Ferreira, Major Ferreira, good guy, good fireman. Like he's, 
what you want is, is achieved. And I remember walking into his office and, and being like, hey, you're coming into this class a week late. You, you know, like, you need to remember that and you need to carry yourself as a professional. And Oh, so the academy already started? This is already started, yeah. I came in oh, a week man. late. They started the week before me. Oh, wow. And, um, you know, he's like, you need to take this job serious and all that. And I'm like, yes, sir, you got it, all that. And in my mind, I'm like, like I got this. Yeah, yeah. Nope. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Those no, life lessons, man. Life lessons. So yeah. I went through the academy. Um, you know, I, I was middle of the pack, kind of. I did what I needed to do. Like, you know, I wasn't a shining star like some of these guys. That people just excel at everything. Just normal guy, just worked. Worked my butt off, you know. And unfortunately, looking back on it, I really wish I would have taken my job a lot more serious back yeah. then. And I didn't because I was young. I was a knucklehead. Finished the academy, um, you know, and got assigned as a rookie uh, into at Station 46, which is, it's in Kentland. Okay. Um, one of the Kentland stations, there's two. And did my year there, got moved out into Sea Pleasant, and uh, started my career, you know. Um, met some really good people, really uh, learned a lot. And again, walk in thinking, oh, I went through the academy. Is it funny to I'm see good. how you are now compared to where you were then? What's it like for you? Do you want to like go back and shake that kid? Oh my God! It's probably illegal to say what I do, what I do to him. <laughs> you know, like I mean, I was I was a bonehead. Like I just there's so many regrets that I have. There's so many things that I did back then that I still still come up today. It's like, oh man, of course you bring that up. Like, yeah, oh yeah. yeah, I did that. You know however long ago and uh, and that's the part that's the part that stinks because you know you're you're only as good as your reputation mm -hmm. i mean you know, it's literally you, all you have that's all you have you could do a thousand things right you could do everything right you could be the hardest working dude in the room and you do that one thing that's what they know you by and that's what they will always remember you by it's true forever it, it's it's sad because everybody makes mistakes in life and, and sometimes you can't get away from it you can't but it's also humbling and it teaches you things because you're not there because of them you're there because of you absolutely my actions put me there with the dumb stuff that I did. So anyone that, you know, didn't have respect for me or people that don't like me, they have a good reason because I was a, I was a bonehead. <laughs> every, every, and they have every right in the world. Listen, However man, it, they it, felt is the way they feel. It and takes a lot to say that though. I mean, a lot, not a lot of people can self-reflect like that. You know, it's good that you're doing that because yeah. these, these people need to hear this. It's you know, tough. people need to understand that you can recover you can yeah. make mistakes in your life and recover and turn out to be a lieutenant PG. Yeah, and you know it's funny because you always laugh at yourself because you know, you know when those situations occur where however you, whoever you're interacting with whatever the situation is or somebody busts your chops and there you are the reason mm -hmm. it's there, but it's okay. I know at the times in my life I look back and I'm like I would literally do something or say something and then walk away and go that was dumb. Like yeah. you know it, it, yeah. I just wish I knew that at the time I was doing it, not to do it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then you're like, oh, well, I haven't put my foot in my mouth yeah, in a long yeah. time. And I, I'm famous for putting my foot in my mouth. I've done that, I think, a lot. And then, you know, the, the worst part about it is, again, you can't, po you can't place blame. I mean, well, you could place blame, but you shouldn't. You, but deep down inside, whether you'll say it or not, yeah. you know you're the reason you're there. And it's like, oh, man. And then every time it comes up, you're like, oh, man. And then it, and then it can trip you up because it's like, all right, I need to go do X, Y, and Z. All right. How's this going to go? Like, you know what I mean? So, you know, again, it's, it's a reputation thing, I think, of how, how things work in the department. And when, you know, your career's a lot easier if you <laughs> do your job and you don't create problems for yourself. Yeah, it'd be a perfect world if we all can do that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, it. again, it's another one of those things, I think, as long as you learn from it. So tell me what happened. You went to the next station was what? I went to Chapel Oaks. Um, the, the staffing changed at Sea Pleasant, and they kind of started moving people around, and it went to a two-man shift house at Sea Pleasant. Stayed there for a little bit, had the opportunity to move to Chapel Oaks. Chapel Oaks was getting five around the clock, which was an um, improvement in staffing that our union fought for. So you had five, five guys? In five guys, yeah. That's yep. awesome. So, yeah, so it, that dedicated the suppression unit, dedicated the – it was a paramedic ambulance, so okay. medic unit dedicated that transport unit and now there was an actual rotation um went there with a really good crew and again 
I was young and dumb, didn't realize what I had. And I had worked with some, two really good guys that are, that are, you know, very good firemen, know the job, not afraid to tell you when you screw up. Um, and they were very hard on me, very hard on me, and, and rightfully so. I gave, them well, a, I gave them a ton of ammunition. Yeah, I was going to say, it sounds like I didn't like help you, myself. You needed it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you needed yeah. it. I did, and, you know, I think it had its place in my life, in my career as well. Um, you know, like we've talked about a little bit earlier, like, man, God, I wish I could go back in time. I oh, mean, yeah. and we all do. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of the lessons I learned from them, I still carry on. I've carried on. But I also, unfortunately, I didn't appreciate it then. And I really wish I would have appreciated it then. But I bring it with me now. You, you know, I mean, I'm not perfect. I'm far from perfect. Right. But, you know, I think just like anything else, it builds that foundation. And then just like building a house as you go up, everything's stronger because of that foundation. Do you find yourself helping helping new guys and girls on the job now because of that? Yeah, I try. I, I you know, I, I and again, it's me now taking everything that I've learned, interpreting it, and then trying to teach it or show it right, or right, right. do whatever it is to, you know, push that along to them. And I think they're receptive. I mean, you know, I've, I haven't been, hey, has what I taught you worked? Or right. are you taking what I taught you? But, but I think I, you see it on the fire You ground. see it. Yeah, right. you can see it. It's more so in the firehouse. Like, you know, whatever, with, with training or, you know, how they carry themselves. And, again, like you just said, on calls, how they carry themselves. Mm -hmm. You see it. But, you know, it's, you're, but you're still a piece of that puzzle, especially now as, an, as an officer. You're a piece of the puzzle, right? They always, that's a, that old uh, saying, it takes a village. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, now I'm falling, figuring out where I fall into place as a, as in the group. Absolutely. And it's a, it's a very um, ever-changing dynamic. Oh, God. Like, you know, you know no, what I mean? Yeah, there's nothing more dynamic than that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, you know, and you figure out, like, you know, sometimes, you know, you're leading the way. Sometimes someone else is leading the way. And, never, and it's never a, a bad thing. Right. I think it's just, you know, there's that formal and informal leadership that, you know, it's, it's a give and take. It's, you know... And then you just have to figure out and go with the fluid and just move with the motion. You know, it's like. For, for me, there's nothing more rewarding than talking to somebody about something they, I see they're doing and it changes. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, well, I didn't waste my breath. Yep. The things I talked about, the person took in value. Yeah. And I'm saying these things because these are mistakes I made. Mm -hmm. So if I'm taking the time with you to tell you, hey, listen, don't be a knucklehead. These are things that you're doing. Yeah. I noticed. And you know why I noticed? Because I did those things. Yeah. And I'm yep. trying to help you not make the same yeah. mistakes I made. Yeah. And for me, um, as a boss, those are some of the rewarding things for me that I get to see. I look back, okay. Yeah. And, and then waste know, my breath. And, and to touch on what we talked about earlier, too, like now your past starts coming up. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. So yeah. you're trying to teach this new person something. You want them to do this, that, or the other. And your past is going to come with you. Because people don't forget anything. Oh, no. Oh, of this guy's not. your officer? Like, <laughs> of course not. You know, hey, did you ever hear about this story for, with him? And it's right. like, oh, crap, man. I was hoping you guys would <laughs> They never forget. Ever forget. That, that's why I feel like if, if you say these things mm -hmm. and you tell them, I made these mistakes. Yeah. I did this. Yeah. That's why I'm trying to tell you you don't make the same mistakes I made. Same when people say it, like, okay. Yeah, and it's, and it's humbling because it's like in the back of your head, you right. know. Absolutely. Like, hey, I'm yeah. going to tell you this. I'm going to try and teach you this the best that I can. But it's all interpretation of how I feel to navigate teaching you. Absolutely. And that in itself is challenging. Like, you know, there's days, you know, especially be, just being an officer in general, you know, I work with a great group of guys. These guys are rock solid. Like, they are good top to bottom. And the only reason you're good is because they are. You know, right. If you have, they, yeah, yeah. your crew can make or break. You. Absolutely. And there's yeah. day, there's days sometimes where you know I feel like Sideshow Bob on The Simpsons walk around <laughs> stepping on rakes. Like no matter where I go, I'm stepping on a rake and square in my face. Yeah, yeah. But you know, figuring out where you fall into that dynamic, and everyone has their part in it, and it just moves as a fluid motion. You know, it it just it comes full circle. You, you know what I mean? And it's challenging. And it all goes back into now you're still teaching somebody. Mm -hmm. Your background comes up. Yep. You know, it's going to come up, but you need to own it. And, again, no matter what happens, what it is, right. what, whatever, whatever's going on and it comes up, you're at fault because you did that action. You were that bonehead back then, and you have to, you just have to deal with it and, and move on. And it's, it's, it's an ever-changing environment. 
specifically with trying to bring up new people, you know. And, again, like I said, falling into my, the guys on my shift, solid dudes. But you figure out where you fall into place as the officer and just as one of the guys. One of the hardest things we all have to do is gaining trust. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And gaining trust is always through your actions, you know, your inactions, mm -hmm. right? Decisions. Indecision is a decision. And I struggled with that where I'm like, oh, well, I'm not really sure what to do. In my head. Uh, or uh, And I still, and there's still days that I struggle with that. I'm wait for him to walk by. <laughs> you can edit that out, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so indecision is always a decision. And, you know, there's days where you struggle and, you know, some days you're, you're on top. Some, some days you're not. It Did is a big boomerang. Yeah, of, uh, this is why I like filming at an active firehouse because you get like that background noise. <laughs> yeah, well, at least you know, at least everybody knows we're at an active firehouse. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Um, so, but yeah, <clears throat> yeah, that's yeah, awesome. Would you say one of the most rewarding things for you in your career so far was being promoted, or is it something else? <sighs> I think, I think being able to help people move forward in their careers or what I think I'm doing to help them. Like, I try, you know. Um, hopefully, you know, I don't need to be, like, the mentor or, like, the end all be, like, do this and you will be okay. No, it's like, hey, look, here's my slice of the pie. You know, hopefully I can help you. Take something away. Hey, I made these mistakes. Don't do what I did. You know what I mean? And, and I think the right people are perceptive, and you can see that. One of the things I'll say about you is, uh, you know, when I'm setting up the the show here, often I get an opportunity to listen to things going on, you know, guys talk and stuff. And I, I watched you sitting on that tailboard mm -hmm. of the engine with two younger guys and you mm -hmm. saying to them, hey, make sure you do this. And, and, hey, I remember when I was your age, I made these mistakes yeah. and I wish I took things more seriously. Yeah. And I heard yeah. that and, I you know, I listen to these things, and, and it's so great to hear because it's exactly, you know, you're not just on my show talking about yeah. these things. I, I literally watched you do these things, uh, and you had no idea I was listening. I was setting up my, yeah. sh my well, show yeah. here. Yeah, yeah. But it just goes to show you that th these things are, are real, yeah. and I believe that about you. I think that no, it's true, that. you know, and, and uh, it's a good thing. If you say, hey, look, this is where, this is my mark on the fire service. I'm going to try to make people better. I mean, yeah. No, no greater thing than that. But that's also a two-way street because the conversation started on their end. Like, you know what I mean? Which is cool. Like, and they're like, hey, you know, I'm doing this, this, and this. And what do you think about, you know, because I know these guys. I know the guys here, right? right. So I've, I've known these people. And, you know, they're like, hey, what do you think about this? I'm like, hey, I was in your shoes. Right, right. And it blew up in my face. Right. You know, try these things. And, you know. That goes a long way, though, man. It does. You know. it, it does. And, you know, and everyone, the people that I've mentioned earlier, the, the, the guys that I work with in my job, every, every person that I, I felt was pivotal, I took something away from. from excuse exactly. Me, something away from that. Exactly, man. Yep. The only hard part is the discretion on how to execute it. Mm -hmm. like, the I, I the hardest part. <laughs> it's the hardest part. And, again... <laughs> Stepping on rakes sometimes, right. you know, a lot of things will just blow. It feels like everything blows up in your face. You can't do anything right. But I feel like you have to step on those rakes in your life because that's what makes you better. But eventually, you it won't blow up in your right. face. You're gonna you're gonna hit a home run one day, and you're gonna be like, all right, cool. And you're gonna get in your you're gonna find a rhythm. You're gonna get mm -hmm. into it, and you're gonna be fine. Absolutely. Um, you know, but it's it's just part of paying your dues. Like it sucks, but so those things are important to you, and I I, I certainly appreciate that. Mm -hmm. But tell me what it was like for you to make make lieutenant. I mean, this is huge, bro. Yeah, so it's a big deal. Yeah, it's yeah. I mean, I feel like it's something that I've wanted to do. I feel like you know, there's a lot of people that brought me up in the fire department um, and in the career side that beat me up hard on me all the time. I mean, just crushed me, and I gave them plenty of like <laughs> wide open target. Right. Here's a softball. Right, right. right. Hit it with a cricket board and knock it out of the park. I was <laughs> a bonehead, bonafide bonehead. And, you know, I slowly started coming around. I realized, you know, I made a, a very big mistake in my career, and, and I, I was just a complete knucklehead, and it was my wake-up call. Um, I realized that I was so quickly becoming a complete, the guy you don't want. You don't right. want him on your crew. You just, you don't want to be that guy. Or you don't want that guy to be there. And... You know, I was like, man, like, I, what am I doing with myself? 
and you know I had somebody he sat me down he's like look man you can either let this make or break you he's like this will never go away he goes but now you have a challenge every day to make yourself better and do something again execution Mm -hmm. right that's the hard part that's the journey so to speak and that's that in itself will teach you what I feel is going to help you continue to move forward so you know I worked with some really good firemen Um, I was like man you know I want to be like them like uh, you know this lieutenant that was very very pivotal in my career man you know I I really want to be like him I want to be that way like I want to be that proficient the way the guys look at him you know, the way they, they don't want to disappoint him. Trust. Trust. He holds that standard. Mm-hmm. And I was like, you know, I, I kind of, you know what? My challenge is I would like to promote. I think I can do a good job, and it will turn me around. Not really sure if that's a good reason to promote, to stop being a knucklehead, is to go now be in charge. Because, right. you know, I spent a good, t- a good amount of time not doing what I should, you know, n- not taking my career serious, unfortunately. Missed out on a lot of opportunities to really learn a lot of really good things, to really absorb the knowledge those guys were trying to push on me. Right. And, uh, you know, so in my department, you have to be a paramedic. So I went to medic school, finished, did my internship, came out, was a medic all, you know, all on my own, took the lieutenant's test, passed, got lucky, got promoted pretty quick. Um, so I got promoted in June, July. 2015. What was that like for you? Like when they tell you you're going to be lieutenant, what, what were you thinking? I was excited. And, you know, the fire chief called, hey, you know, congratulations. This is your effective date, you know. And um, you stay in the same house or you go to a different no, house? No, you get moved. Okay. So I went and um, I actually went acting before he officially promoted me. So I got promoted. And then, it, you know, it's your first, I was on day work. I got, I got promoted. I went to Station 14, Berwyn Heights. And I walked in the first day, and I remember, man, I got promoted. This is going to be great. I put my stuff up, set my stuff up just like I would normally do in the, you know, riding backwards. And I was sat there, and I stopped. And I remember thinking to myself, what did I get myself into? Because it all changes, like, oh, man. <laughs> it, like, it's real. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? So I was acting for a little bit before. Yeah. And again. And now you're responsible, man. And now you are responsible. Yep. And you're not a friend. You're not a buddy. You're the lieutenant. You're right. the, you're the leader, and I didn't take that serious. I again, I went right back into bonehead ways. You know, I was like, well, I'm, you know, I'm the lieutenant. You're supposed to listen to me. No. Yeah, no. You can tell them to do something. Oh, sure. They're gonna that, probably do it. The respect is earned. The respect is earned. Absolutely. Not entitled. Absolutely. To a point. And you find that out pretty quickly. Yeah, to a point. I mean, in you know, in theory, if I were to tell you, hey, man. Um, we have to do housework. I mean, they're right. going to do the housework. Right, of course. They probably won't do it when you say go do the housework, but they're going to do it eventually, right? Right. But now, you know, you're not there to be their friend, and that's the mistake that I made. Like, oh, let's all get along and be buddy-buddy. Like, if, you know, you like me. Super hard transition. Terrible. And then the new lesson came in of you're in, you're, you're screwing this up. You know, I, I had a firefighter sit me down and be like, yo, like, you need to change. You we need to fix something and stepped on another rig and didn't take it seriously. Whatever, dude. Like, yeah. What do you know? Like, you know what I mean? Like, you don't know what it's like to do my job. Well, then I realized I don't know what it's like to do my job because I'm new. Right. And you're just learning yourself. And it just, it was, I had a good time there. Um, I was there for a while and I learned a lot, ran some pretty good fires, had a lot of, you know, a lot of good experiences. I had a really good battalion chief that really, like really, you know, put a foot in my butt if I needed it. Like expectations, if you don't meet them, you will hear about it. And Perfect. He hammered me. Perfect. And I gave him a ton of ammunition because I was a knucklehead again. And, you know, it's like, you know, at that point as well, I, well, I'm in a cycle now. I'm like, this is a perpetual cycle of me Absolutely, yeah. being a knucklehead. And, you know. Like how do I break out of this? How do I get out of it? Right. You know, and then. But again, everything taught me something. You know, everyone, with, you know, is, you know, it's kind of corny, but people come into your life for a reason. Absolutely. And I think, thing, I think things happen to you for a reason. And when they happen to you, hopefully you know it's a lesson. Unfortunately, hindsight's twenty twenty. Well, a lot of people in life, they, you know, they keep having mistakes because they're not using those mistakes as lessons. Yeah. And if they yeah. do that, maybe once. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Ex- exactly. And, you know, and again, then I ended up moving, moving stations um, 
as a lieutenant, I went to Capitol Heights. Um, I was at Bunker Hill for a little bit first for a couple months and then moved into Capitol Heights, and I've been there since. And, you know, I was like, all right, cool, fresh start. Well, I thought I was doing good. But, it, again, and then what I started really learning was it's an evolution. It's, it's, an, ever, it's an ongoing thing. Like, it's never going to not be a challenge, right? Be comfortable with being uncomfortable is kind of, unfortunately, what I've learned. And because I'm not allowing myself to do the right thing because I'm overthinking things. you got to keep it simple, right? And, you know, worked with some people, learned some lessons. And didn't really handle a lot of things. Stepping on the rakes at Sideshow Bob again. Stepping on, <laughs> stepping on rakes. And, you know, it, it just never clicked. Like, you know, I'm, I'm heading down that path. I'm heading down that path. And, you know, the cycle was was ongoing you know and and i had another firefighter that i work with now he's like you know yo dude like let's go talk and he's like so and he would he kind of broke it down so right here's a trend of firemen hey lt he's your fireman right you need to fix this and you know it this last time i think i really it really it really clicked because now i have a crew not and there's nothing against anyone i ever worked with but i have a crew now that are good, they're good at their job. They know their job, top to bottom, all of them, razor sharp. The guys that are a dream for an officer to work for, they're not going to let you get away with shit. Perfect. They're going to call you out. Perfect. They're respectful. Mm -hmm. They're not going to be disrespectful to you, but they're not yes men. You know, and, and it, when this fireman talked to me, he was like, you know, hey, man, look, you need to, collectively, we need you to fix this. And... That was the first time consciously I could think to myself, all right, I've seen this before. This, <laughs> this is a cycle. And, you know, I'm, I think I've, you know, found, fell into place with, you know, where I sit and sit in the, you know, sit in how things go. Yeah, it's huge. Um, the fact that you have somebody that get, cares enough to pull yeah, you aside. Yeah, you know, he, I mean, he cares enough and he's also, he's just, he's just not afraid to say it. Yeah. He's, he, he's, he's going to be respectful about it because it's, He's a good man, and that's how he carries himself. You know, that's just how he how he does things. Yeah, but I also believe that if they didn't care or give a shit, then they'll let you fall on your face. Right. And and right. that's not happening. It's, also, and it doesn't. And yeah. you know, there like I said, because there's people out there that have no problem watching sure, others fall on their face. Sure, lieutenant, yeah. we can do that. And just <laughs> kaboom, it blows right. up in your face. Absolutely. You know, I think it's 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 a mutual respect. I think, um, you know, handing them ammunition, handing people ammunition, just anyone ammunition to hammer you i think you know you have no one to blame but yourself and yeah i mean that's kind of where we're at now um i'm at the point you know kind of talking to what you said before about the transition and all and and what what being the you know that promotion is you know now i'm really feeling like all right like now i feel comfortable and this is five six years into it right now i feel i can be proactive with my actions and thinking like all right cool i've seen something like this before take a breath orient what's going on you know assess what's going on make a decision move forward and that's a problem i always had and i never realized that y you know what i mean yeah that self-reflection is not yeah. easy yeah yeah and, and it's you know it was, it was very pivotal yeah so what, what's been your most rewarding part of being an officer i think adding in your perspective on situations. Like when you're a firefighter, you, you toss your idea into the hat. Yeah. It may get listened to. It may not be. You know, all right. You have three years on, dude. Right. Whatever. Right. You know, but there's that big thing of, you know, whether you have three years or 30 years on, how you carry yourself is how it's perceived. Right. And I think now when I start kind of tossing my hat, my, my opinion into the hat, no one says it. It's never, like, identified, oh, hey, that's smart, or hey, <laughs> this is a great idea. No, yeah, it's yeah. never that way. Right. It's, you know, but you can tell. Like, hey, you know, I think we had a situation not that long ago. They wanted to try a different way to execute something, and I was like, no, that's too much. Keep it simple. But that was the advice I got from one of the guys on my shift, and I think it clicked with him. And he's like, yeah, okay, yeah, that's, no, that's, that's a good point. Like, yeah, that is too difficult. Let's just keep it simple. Right, right. And that's what we did. So, and, yeah, that's, so you're telling me that for you that's a buy-in? I think the buy-in's there. Uh, you know, until now that we're talking about it, it never really clicked in my mind, but I think the buy-in's there. Good. Um, I can't put into words how I know, but the buy-in's there. Um, Tell me what it was like for you to have 
you know, the guys on your tour. Tell me what that's like for you. Like, t- talk to me a little bit about the kitchen table. <laughs> The things oh, you can man. say. <laughs> yeah. It's a, that, oh man. It's never, it's actually not even really the table. It's wherever they are. Right. Wherever the. Wherever well, that's the, a good, that's a great point because it doesn't have to be, you know, the cliche of the kitchen yeah. table. I mean, you could be on the, on the bumper of a rig. Yeah. Well, and, but that's the point though, is yeah. it's not, it's not where you are. It's who you're with. Absolutely. It's, it's the guys. Yeah. Agreed. The, the, you know, your shift mates. So, you know. The, 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 the dynamic on my shift is very, it's very interesting. <laughs> Nobody is afraid to voice their opinion. <laughs> it doesn't matter who you are. Right. Time on, rank, they don't care. Well, I mean, really, everyone, it, it shouldn't matter when you're in that environment. Yeah, anyway. and, and, and that's the thing is, yeah. everyone, you, you are fair game. If yep. you're in there, you're in their line of sight, <laughs> you are fair game, and they're going to crush you. Yep. And you're going to get your, you know, they're going to break your chops. They don't care who you are. And, you know, that part of it is fun. You know, it, it's, it's, it's a nice tempo. But, you know, you could also come back from a call, like a serious call, like, you know, trauma or fire, whatever it is. Whatever the situation is, it's never, let's sit down, guys, and talk about it. No, no it's, it just happens. It happens. Yeah, It usually absolutely. starts with one firefighter. He's mm-hmm. the guy that's got the most time on after me. And he's like, that informal leadership, he's like, hey. And he starts talking and the guys listen and, or, you know, and, and that's the best part about it with this dynamic of this shift is, yeah, he'll start sometimes, but a lot of the times someone is starting. It's Mm -hmm. not always the same person either, which is the best part. Right. Because, you know, everyone wants to be there. Everyone wants to go to fires. Everyone wants to, regardless of what the call is, they want to go out the door and do the best that they can. Absolutely. And when the bell goes off, the amount of professionalism and the service that these guys provide second to none. Well, that's They're what's great. funny about about the fire service, and I laugh because I think of the guys, you know, <laughs> I work with, and, and some of them, it's it's cringeworthy stuff we talk about. Yeah, well. But then when the bell rings and I see these guys yeah. on the fire ground, I mean, they're just utter professionals. I mean, just amazing what they, they do and what, what we've what we got accomplished together as a team. But, you yeah. know, like this, like PG, the people you serve, you know, your community – they have the best of the best, yep. but in the firehouse, it's like you guys can t- literally talk about anything, and it's fun. And yeah, you know, it's awesome. and, and like I said, when that 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 switch flips, oh yeah, the way they carry themselves, the and that's a true talk. professional, someone that can yeah. really do that, someone yeah, that can flip then, the switch, yeah, exactly, and they right. can flip that switch really easy. And you know, there's always you know a little bit of, you know, jocularity, I guess is the word on calls. Like you know, you kind of poke fun a little bit at each other on the way back down the road or on the way up the road, you kind of joke around a little bit. Very, very, very minor here and there, but they know game time. Absolutely. And that's not anything I ever said to them. That's a true professional. And that's not anything I ever said. Hey, when we're going down the road, you You don't have to. You don't have to. Because they are, they're just awesome at their job. Right. They love being there. And, you know, you work hard. Well, they play hard. (laughs) Like, you know what I mean? It doesn't matter who you are. Absolutely. You will get, Brought into the, you know, the bus and chops. Yeah, it's like the Thunderdome. It is the Thunderdome. <laughs> and all bets are off. And I, you know, and I've said this to them a few times, and I can't even believe I admitted it out loud, was I've had, you know, guys broke my chops my whole career in the volunteer service, you know, now in the career service. I have never in my life had my balls busted as much as these guys. <laughs> they, and, it, and the best part about it is it's funny. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, the worst part, though, the worst thing you could ever do is say something or even remotely allow it to, for people to think it bothers you. Right, because then then it's just like a harpoon. Game. Oh, God, yeah. Yeah. Never never really weaknesses. And there's a person on my shift, you walk in the door, or the, well, not when I walk in the door. (laughs) When he walks in the door, you know it. (laughs) And he is that way, wide open, all 24 hours. Like, it's like having a teenager. You know what I mean? And he... And they just, he just hammers everyone. I was going to say, when, you know, when you're not getting picked on, then you got to worry about, like, am I doing something wrong? Is there a problem? Because if they don't yeah. pick on oh, you, yeah. that's usually a problem. Yeah, absolutely. And, yeah. and he is just, I mean, wide open until he crashes at night, goes to bed at 9 <laughs> o'clock, takes a shower, and then snores all night. You know what I mean? So even sleeping, he's still loud. So he never really goes away. He, he doesn't go away. <laughs> but when it's time for that fire. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, when it's time for that fire, when he's driving or when he's in the back, he's on the line. All right. 
He's all in. Sharp. Like, yeah. good dude. Awesome fireman. He's a great guy. Um, you know, it just <laughs> – it's just funny because, like, you know, just the joking. Yeah. You know, you, you can't come to work and not be happy. Like, it's, it's hilarious. It's funny, man, because you're right. Because there's times that, you know, I'll come to work and I got stuff going on yeah. personally. And I'm like, yep. I come to work. I'm like, I'm not going to go to work. But, like, literally within five minutes. Yeah. Within five minutes, I'm, like, laughing. Like, I know? can't even get my stuff checked sometimes <laughs> before somebody is saying something. <laughs> not towards me, but just, like, you know, whether you hear it or, you know, you're involved in it. Yeah. You're like... Yo, dude, it's like five thirty. For me, yeah. it's five thirty. As soon as I come to work, we uh, punch in, you know, and then I, I go to my locker, start getting my stuff out, and I already hear so Tyler and Ray. I got Tyler and Ray. Mm-hmm. They're already at each other, you know, and <laughs> they're nonstop, and, and they're already going at it. And I'm like, man, it's it's six oh one. Yeah, like, what do we do? <laughs> yeah, and you know this the best part. Well, you know, and that's the best part. Like this guy comes stomping in in flip flops and shorts. He doesn't believe in belts. Right, stomping in, total goofball, right? And he's just, I mean, he's a Jersey boy. I don't know what goes on on his ride in, but I want to be a fly on the wall because when he comes in, everyone's getting it. Yeah, he's just, he, and it, you know, but, you know, I don't, I don't ever really say this a lot. I, actually, I don't think I've ever said it out loud to them, but I love it. You yeah. know, you go home, you have life, you have whatever, and, you know, I had, I had some um, – not so much fun stuff go on for a little while and you know you go into work and you get your balls busted by guys you really respect yeah, yeah. not just you get along like right. you respect them absolutely and you know like we're not i don't think people fire department people are really the kind of people in general to say i like you you're great yeah. you're a great officer they're no. just going to say you're they good don't fireman, yeah. Well, they, well, they, well, I mean, if yeah, they say you you're may, a good fireman, they, you they may, like you. you. But you don't know. Right. You, you never know. If they say, oh, he's a good guy, then then you got problems. Yeah, you never want that. Yeah. But when they just crush you on everything, and it's you can clearly tell it's the ball breaking right. or the chop busting, whatever, I feel like you can tell. And, again, I could be in the middle of uh, learning a lesson. of I may be wrong, but, I, I you know, I feel like I, <laughs> I would have learned that part already. I think you would have. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, again, like I said, these guys aren't bashful, you know, and, you know, it, you got a good – we have a good mix of people, um, backgrounds and stuff. Um, one guy was a professional ball player for a little bit. No kid. Yep. Yeah, ended awesome. up working for the fire department. Um, he's kind of an easy target sometimes with <laughs> the way these guys give him, some, <laughs> give him, a, give him a hard time, but he's, he's a good dude. Yeah. Really good man. Um, I think he is very good for the time he has. Um, he hasn't been on too long, but he's sharp, and he's going to be – he could easily, you know, make this a 25-, 30-year career, and he's going to be an absolute asset no matter what he does. He's awesome. That's he, it's, it's great to have him on the shift. Um, the other part of the dynamic, we, you know, we have, a, we have a mix, and then we have this – we have a guy that's older than everybody. It's kind of like we're his kids a little bit. <laughs> he's, he's a little bit older. He's kind of a farm guy, you know, and uh, he owns a farm, and he'll tell you about it. Right. Three in the morning, he's going to tell you about his farm. <laughs> and he's going to tell you about his hunting. Hunting town. Hunting town. See, yeah, I remember see? Yeah. 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 Yeah, maybe you should come down here. Maybe but, I figured uh, it out. You know, and again, you know, his love for his, his farm, what he does, his passions, his kids. You know, he loves being in the fire department. Good dude. He's an older guy. We always give him a hard time, call him Pop Pop, <laughs> joke with him about his white New Balances, jeans cutting, oh. cutting, cutting the grass and working on, working on farm, right. splitting wood, like, you know, all that. But, you know, again, he's a he's solid dude, Yeah. you know. and It's so funny, the personalities, the firehouse. Yeah, know, it's, and it's then, you, then we also have another guy. He's the wild one. He's covered in tattoos, got tattoos everywhere, like anywhere you could think of. And he just comes in, and these stories that he tells of his experiences outside the firehouse, and I'll leave it at that, you know, are hilarious. I mean, he's just a he's funny guy. Like, he just brings that, he brings that level of just, he's, he's funny. Right. Like, you know. You, funny how. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. But he's, you know. What's so, so funny about this? This is a guy on our shift. He, uh, he has a lot of tattoos. I'll just leave it at that. Crazy. He's just. <laughs> He's funny. He he has he he he's one of those guys that I think likes to make the firehouse fun. 
I think he has a lot of crazy stories that are just they're they're hilarious. The way he carries himself, good. He's a good guy. He's a really good guy, and he makes coming to work fun because he's the one that he starts stirring stuff up, and he's always <laughs> got something funny to say in a good way. Right, right. Um, and he's got some time on, and you want to talk about a guy that loves his job, loves the fire department, passionate, right? Good dude. He reminds me a lot of myself when I was younger, and you know. I think he he's very good at where he is. Both of the guys with that I've talked about that um, have a good amount, of, you know, not a ton of time on, but enough. Right. They're both good dudes. I mean, they're just you know, and you know, and he's he's going places in his career. He's just one of those guys that just works hard, but he has a lot of fun. He's hilarious to be around. Like <laughs> some of the stuff he says, man, you know, in joking ways. Right. Some of the stuff he says, it's just kind of like. That's funny. Like, you know, like he, he just makes it like he's one of those guys that'll that'll make your sides hurt from laughing. Oh, just, yeah. Oh, yeah. you know, just the things that he, you know, that he says and all that. And he's, he's, a fun, he's a funny guy, but I mean, loves his job, grinds, does it. He's good at it. He's, and he knows he's good at it, which is good. Right. And he just, you know, he, he just, he's a great fireman to have. He's, he really is. And, you know, I don't really say that a whole lot. He knows who he is. He's, he's a good dude. And, I, and I, it's a pleasure working with him. We've worked together before. And I think both of us have grown a lot since then. And, you know, it's a good dude. Um, we also have uh, we have two medics on our shift. Okay. Um, one of them worked at a firehouse pretty close by. He's got the most time on um, second uh, just after me. He started, I think, a class or two after me. I think two classes after me. And he just, you know, he's another guy that's hilarious. Not afraid to tell you what he's thinking. I mean, he puts me in check sometimes. Um but I don't think he ever does it, if it unless it's warranted. And he's never disrespectful. Um, he's a good fireman. You know, these guys look up to him, I think. I think they look to him for advice. Um, and I think it's – I don't want to say it's more than they come to me, but I think it's one of those things that when you carry yourself a certain way as a firefighter, they're going to gravitate towards you. So you can oh, tell. Absolutely. And, you know, and there's a lot of times where he'll, you know, any one of them, but specifically this guy will start talking about something and everybody flocks in to talk about it and we all stick around and says his spot, his, his part about it. You know, he's always in a very good mood, you know, always, always happy. He's never mad. He's never, you know, pissed off. Like he's just, he's a happy guy. Yeah, Great those, to be around. Those are people you want to gravitate yeah, to. Yeah, and yeah. He, and he's good at what he does. He's yeah. very smart. You know, and, and, and no matter what the call is, what what it's for, again, call goes out, sharp, razor sharp. And, um, you know, he's definitely, he's, he's great to have. He really is. He's, um, I learned from him. Um, you know, sometimes it's stuff that I learn, you know, in general. I'm like, oh, man, I should probably know this already. Like, <laughs> but I find myself, you know, figuring out where that balance is. And, you know, my ego allowed me to, be like, oh, what are you going to tell me, just in general? And then, you know, working with these guys, specifically this one, oh, you know, I don't know as much as I thought I did. I should shut my mouth and listen. And listen, right, Oh, right, right. hey, that's a good idea. And, you know, I don't think that's something you could do with everyone. I don't think that's something anywhere you get, not just my department, any department, knowing your source of who's coming at you, I think is important because you could have somebody that has no idea what they're talking about. And if you just say yes and listen to everyone, I think you're going to be spinning your wheels. Like, you know what I mean? But absolutely, you know, and, and that, you know, he's, he's a good dude. He really is. I have a ton of respect for him. I respect all everyone on my shift, you know, because of the way they carry themselves. Um, and then it really made me like, man, I really need to step up. I really need to step up. And um, so I've learned a lot from him. And I think it's not so much a lack of knowledge on my end or a lack of knowledge in general. I think it's a different dynamic that I didn't experience. Because right. he worked in one area for eight and a half years. And in that area he worked, he had a ton of experience. And he cares about his job. And he brought that experience to you. And he brought it. And he's yeah. good at his job. Right. And, you know, he got more work than I did in the previous time I worked in the department before we started working together. And, you know, I think I test his nerves a lot. But, you know, I think overall in general, and we have a good working relationship and, and beyond what it, you have to have. And it, like it, it's there. 
like you know the mutual respect I think is there yeah. amongst that's everyone. In, that's important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so the other medic we have, he just came. He just came in recently. Um, he's very smart. He's very. He's fun. he's another funny guy. He likes to have a good time. He has a lot of fun when he works, and um, you know, and he's another good fireman. You know, he knows his job. You, you know what I mean? And and he wants to be there. He wants to go to fires. He wants to do whatever he needs to do to provide a service. And these guys are on the ambulance, I'm assuming? So they rotate. Okay. Um, the, the actual paramedics, they're firefighter medics. They're not just medics. Um, they were firemen first, then they became medics, and they worked in good stations. They, you know, and they, did, they took the time to be good at their job, to be proficient, gotcha. and to learn. And so they do, um, it's called a medic bucket spot. So they'll rotate. They get a one-on-one -on -one rotation, which is good. Right. That's not everywhere in the county. Just, I mean, our station has it. So they'll do 24 on the, uh, on the medic unit, or the P, it's a paramedic ambulance. And then they'll go and they'll be in the bucket and then a medic on the bucket. And the, um, the engine's a paramedic engine. Oh, I got you. Okay. So they do all the ALS care. So they rotate between the two. And, you know, and he's a good dude. You know what I mean? He, he cares about his job. He's fun to be around. You know what I mean? He carries himself in a way to where you're going to have respect for them, for him. You know what I mean? And he just he just wants to go to fires. He wants to be good at whatever, whatever it is. He wants he wants to do it and be good at it. Yeah, that's great, man. You know what I mean? Three yeah. in the morning, three in the afternoon. First medical, thirtieth medical. He's happy. Yeah. He's doing his job. That's and huge. And that's huge, sharp. man. Because it's 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 and EMS is a burnout thing, man. Yeah, and it takes a lot to yeah and, stay motivated. And I think our station is either. It's kind of it's a, it's a weird dynamic where you could be super quiet during the day and then get slaughtered at night, or you're just destroyed. They de you just get destroyed with calls. You right, just, you, the whole twenty four. I mean, you yeah. can run a whole uh, yeah. And again, like I said, they just the bell goes off, head down, ready to go. Before I let you off the hot seat, talk to me a little bit about about the family dynamic, your personal family, like how, how this all balances. Yeah, so I'm married. Uh, I have a, my wife. Her name's Angela. She is. She should be a saint because the amount of crap that I had with me when I met her <laughs> is, I mean, I don't, I don't know how she dealt with me. I couldn't deal with me. You, you know what I mean? She just, she is the absolute, she's my rock. I'm far from a perfect husband. I'm far from, you know, what I think the ideal guy should be, but she's everything in the world to me. She really is. And she, she's, she's that balance. You know, like, hey, you're being dumb. <laughs> Stop doing that. Or, you know, and, and her and I joke sometimes, like, she's my personal secretary. So I'll write something up that needs to go out or whatever it is or an email or, you know, or it's just something that needs to be discussed somehow in writing that I'm just not sure of. Well, actually, anything that goes out in writing, I'm like, hey, take a look at this. And she's she'll read it and be like, wow. <laughs> what gonna, are you trying to say? I'm going to change this. Yeah, change yeah. That. she's like, you, you didn't send that, right? No, I didn't send it right. Good. Like, you need to work on this. And, you know, she'll help me out, rewrite everything, and send it back, and then I'll copy-paste and send it out. And, I mean, it's not like, you know, I can't write, but, you right. know, I mean, she's... Sometimes you need a second, yeah. better eyes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, I, or I a mean, different perspective. A different perspective. And my yeah. thing is, like, I'm a bonehead, right? I have a high school diploma. I never went to college. You know what I mean? She has a couple bachelor's degrees, very well established. She's older than I am. She has a ton more life experience. She worked at a local shock trauma in Baltimore for a long time. I mean, she's, and she carries herself very well. She's a very intelligent, mature woman. And, you know, without her, yeah, I, just, I wouldn't be anywhere without her. I mean, she, yeah. That's I awesome. Leave it at that. Yeah, that's um, great. I don't really know how to put into words. Um, I also have a son. He's just like me. So you can imagine how that is. <laughs> And he's, I mean, everything I do, when I wake up in the morning, and, you know, you don't really think it consciously, but, or you don't, maybe you don't talk to yourself about it or really say it out loud, but, like, it's for them. Oh, absolutely. You, like, yeah. you know, like, yeah. nothing's worth anything if you don't have somebody to share it with. And being able to go home and tell my kid, hey, man, you know, let's go play outside, or I have my health, he has his health, you know, all that, it's great. Like, all he talks about is fire trucks. So cool. I made the mistake of showing him, hey, this is YouTube. <laughs> I need to do these things. Watch these fire trucks while I do my whatever I have to do in the house. He's obsessed with it. That's awesome. It's all he wants, all he talks well, about. It's in his DNA. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And, yeah. you know, he's all the time, hey, uh, can we be firemen together? I'm like, 
Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. I, don't, I mean, hopefully I can help you not make the mistakes that I did. But, <laughs> yeah. you know, hopefully, you know. Well, someday he'll watch this. And, oh, my God. Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's going to be fantastic. I think this is going to be – he's going to love this. Um, and he's, you know, he just – he's a good kid. He's, right. he's, you know, he's young, obviously. Start, just started nursery school and very smart, very happy. And uh, we're very, very fortunate to have, you know, we have a good kid. You know, a lot of people yeah. say that, but, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, I think he's, he's a good kid. And, you know, he's always asking me what I'm doing. You know, he, they FaceTime me every day, twice a day, in the morning when they wake up and at night. Oh, can I see the fire truck? Psh, okay. <laughs> I mean, you know what I mean? Like, it doesn't matter how tired I am. It doesn't matter how long of a shift I've had. If I'm in a crappy mood, you know, my wife's pissing me off or I'm just mad at work, whatever it is. Right, right. He's always happy to see me. Like, my my daughters are older, and, you know, and it's just cool. Like, I'll get just a stupid text message, you know, a random text message is all I need. Yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. It changes everything, yeah. you know. And, yeah. you know, and that's the thing, and, like, you can tell. I mean, yeah, he like he loves his fire trucks, and he right. loves, you know, whatever. Um, he watches this show on Amazon called Stinky and Dirty. It's a backhoe <laughs> and a trash truck, like, <laughs> the randomest thing. You know, he likes those yeah. things, but, like, it's kind of – you can tell when I come home from work, like, it's me. Yeah. I'm the center of his You're world. Dad. I'm dad. Yeah, man. And, you know, I didn't have that growing up. Right. I didn't, you know, my dad wasn't around. You know, I had a crappy home life. And, you know, I can now pass along to my son that he's going to have a father around, you know, yeah. God willing, knock on wood. Yeah. It's just being there. It's possible. Yeah. Being there. That's half the battle. And, you know, and I can share that with him. Right. And, you know, he loves everything. You know, I'm in the pipe band, and he loves the pipe band. Like, he's ecstatic about it like he's oh you're gonna go play your drum you're gonna go to the firehouse you're gonna go to fires like hopefully hey, hopefully you know talk so. about the pipe band bro yeah so you just skim right past uh, that. yeah I'd, i mean that's I awesome it, it it you know yeah it's it's i love it um the be- backstory on it though was you know my father-in-law who's since passed he passed away a few years ago um i knew him before i'm sorry actually, to hear that i appreciate it um I knew him before I knew my wife, who obviously is his daughter. And he, you know, he teach, it's called Mifri, Maryland Fire Rescue Institute. So he taught for them and I took some classes with him. It wasn't like a formal friendship, but I knew him. Like, oh, hey, John, how are you? Oh, good. You know, how are you doing? But nothing really beyond that. And, um, you know, I started dating Angie, my wife. And, you know, we ended up getting married and everything, obviously. And, (laughs) but, uh, hey, you should join the pipe band. I'm not doing that join the pipe band like I, I don't <laughs> you don't even know how to read music right I, I don't yeah I mean, you know and I played saxophone when I was in when I was in school like oh, I, mean, okay. I can read music like right, I can right. you know I can play and everything and you know he's like oh you should join you should join I was like ah, you know like I, I never felt like I had time like it just it didn't because that's a huge commitment it's a huge commitment yeah. and again I'm a bonehead and learning those things are difficult it's not right. easy right. it just didn't grasp me and then you know he got sick he had mesothelioma um he ended up passing away from it. Ah, it sucks. Yeah. And I was like, oh, man, I should join. This would be a really nice way to continue. So you joined for him? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I mean, you know, at the time I didn't think I joined for John, but I feel like it all clicked, like, I need to do this because I didn't have him in my life for a long time. He was more of a father than I ever. I feel like I ever had. Like, he was, he was more excited for me getting promoted than I think I was. <laughs> like, he was ecstatic. Like, I would, I'd leave Berlin Heights, and we'd run a fire, right? Well, he knew about it because he had a scanner. Right. He'd call me, hey, how'd it go? Hey, what'd you do? And, like, every day on my hour drive, you know, 45-minute drive home, whatever it is, calling me, hey, what'd you do? How'd it go? Like, every time. He was so, you know what I mean? And having that influence in my life, you know, it, it felt like, you know, I had a dad, you know, and, and he... He made me. It made me feel good to like be who I was. And, and as cheesy share, as that sounds, and share share with and, somebody. Yeah, right? and yeah. so and it's you know, awesome. fast forward, and he passed, and he he didn't. You know, he passed before my son was born. You know, and all this. You know, which was you know sad. And I was like, oh well, you know, if I join the pipe band, it's kind of like he's. You know, a, a connection. Absolutely. As man. cheesy yeah. as that sounds. It like does a, sound cheesy. Bro. You, awesome. you know, like, yeah. I mean. It means something. It's definitely yeah, not cheesy. It, so it became, it, it had purpose in my life. Absolutely. So I joined. What and a actually, great and I got, way to give back to him. Yeah. 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 And, he sees. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was in the band since it started. It's the um, Fire Brigade Pipes and Drums of Greater Baltimore. Cool. He started in 2004. He was one of the charter members. And I think he was, and he was just a drummer the entire time. So I actually got to use his drum for the first couple years. No kidding. And I still have the drum, but I, I changed instruments okay. to the bass drum, the big drum, um, just how things worked out. And everyone in the band, they knew John. They, they know Angie and her mom and her brother, like the family, like was super involved. They're the, I mean, and they're a great group of people. This band, you know, the professionalism of their musicianship and just good, they're just good people. They're always happy. You know what I mean? They're just, they're the most genuine, nice people. And I'm like, man, I gotta be a part of this. That's so cool. I have to do this. And PG didn't have a pipe band then. They have one now, but they didn't have one then. So I was like, well, it's, well, it's three minutes for me to drive to practice. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) I'm going to go do it. And, You know, I mean, when I tell you I was like a bonehead, like they they taught me, you know, they taught me how to play the drum and how cool. It, yeah, and, and I, th- I mean, I they had their work cut out for them with me. I, that's th- that's for sure. And um, you how know, rewarding kind of is it for place. you now, though, to be where you're at with it and then know that you're doing this for your father-in-law is awesome. It's nice, and I'm sure, your wife must be over the moon about it. it. <laughs> yeah, she she likes it. And it's yeah. it's kind of I don't know if it creates a tie with him still with the family. If, Still with the family for me doing it, but there's a lot of memories. Like they would go out to, um, they like Fireman's Week in mm-hmm. Ocean City, Maryland, and the pipe band played all these events. And you know, it, it it's there now. That's awesome. The 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 parade down the middle of Baltimore, the Baltimore City. I, I guarantee St. Patrick's you f- Parade for the family. It means a world. To I think them. it does because you're you're living on that legacy, man. That's yeah, like, that's huge. Yeah, and but you know, like I don't want to overstep my bounds. Like I don't want to yeah. be, you know. I don't know, cross any lines or anything. I don't like think that. that's the case at all. And I don't, and, and, and I, it's not, it's yeah. not. But you know, it's being able to keep him alive in through that is 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 very rewarding. And my son loves it. So in the future, it can now be I started because of your grandfather. Let me tell you about your grandfather, or let me show you these pictures because his passion was the. His kids, his wife and kids, the fire department, and the pipe band. That's what John loved. That's all. Awesome. His family was yeah. everything. He was the rock of his family. I mean, he's a good man. And, you know, being able to teach my son that, even though he never met him, um, he'll be able to have that part. And he's actually, we actually named our son, his name's Finley John. John is for John, his father. Oh, that's his, so cool. His grandfather. Yeah, that's so cool. Um, and he has an Irish first name. Yeah, which is Finley. So, you know, and it, it comes back full circle. Like, now I'm in it. I'm in the pipe band. Um, like I said, they, they had a lot of work teaching me how to play the drum. You, you would think I could count <laughs> and keep rhythm not even close. Like, ah, man, it was a lot of work. And it, it's awesome. I love it. It's, it's, I became very passionate about it. And it's another one of those things. Of, man, I wish I would have known this. Like, when John first started, like, hey, you should join the pipe band. I should have been like, all right. Yeah, I'll do it. Because yeah, I'm sure you're looking back on, oh, man, I could have had all these experiences with him. Time with him, right, more right. time, more hang out. Because, you know, I mean, I think anytime anyone passes and when they come into your life, you know, you always wish you had more time. Absolutely. I don't, I don't think there's a, a person in the world that goes, my man, I wish I, wish I spent more time with them. You know, yeah, I wish yeah. I did this or did that. Yeah. yeah, and, you know, having that element, it just adds balance into everything. Like, I get a, get a break from home, but... You know, Tuesday nights on pi- on the practice nights, that's right. my night. I go out and hang out with them. They go to a bar afterwards. We hang out. We talk. We have a great time. And then you go and you do whatever the jobs are, parades, whatever it is, funerals, unfortunately, sometimes. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, just these different events, you do them. And like I mentioned right. before about uh, the, the week out in Ocean City, you have all these events. Well, all these memories come up, you know. Like my wife all the time, man, I remember when Dad did this, this, and this. And it's like, oh. And, you know, I mean – you always wish they were here, but you now it's a fun memory, Absolutely. Fond, or fond memory, not fond, fond memory, right? Fond, a fond memory. Absolutely. Agreed. You know, and, and and it's and it's it's you know just a a good way to keep him around. I don't know how to explain that. I don't know if that sounds no no that no. Makes L- sense, listen, it, everything you said makes perfect sense, and I think that yeah. the family it means more than them than you think. Yeah, and it's funny, you know, it's funny mentioning the family too, because like there's a lot of times. You know, her mom will say, you married your father. <laughs> and she's like, or I'll say something or do something, right, not even right. realizing it. She's like, oh, my God, I married my dad. <laughs> and that's cool. Yeah. Because it's it's an honor to be somebody that was such a great man that he was. Yeah. So That's awesome. Yeah. Bro, listen, I 
I appreciate you coming on the show. It was awesome to, to talk to you. I mean, I, I've i been following you on Instagram, and mm-hmm. then I got to meet you through Fred. Yeah, Fred. Which is... Old Fred. Bro, his barbecue is out of this world. Yeah, don't worry. He'll tell you it is, too. He's actually on a R&D, Research and Development Week in Texas, so I'm sure... Well, he, he literally can brag because it's he that He can. Good. Yeah, you know... Holy and, cow, is it good. It's so good. And his... He... And again, I can't believe I'm going to admit this out loud on on video, but his his barbecue is very oh, good. Oh man, it is. He is a he's truly a professional in what he does with that barbecue. He's, he is absolutely <laughs> so, fantastic. So when I when I met with him and he had this big tray of all the different mm-hmm. bro to rubs, yeah, at yeah. this world, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So he's actually, you know, he makes his own sauces, yeah, that he bottles, yeah. I don't remember if he sells them. I think he does. It's crazy. Yeah, and and. The, he should. It's yeah, like, yeah, yeah I, I think he might. I don't remember if he does or not. He's, he's a lot gonna, of fun. He's going to hammer me for not knowing that. <laughs> he is a very unique character uh, in a good way. He, he's, he's just, you know, he's just so good at what he does with yeah. the barbecue. I mean, it, it's it's fantastic. It really is. And On that episode, we talked about, like, have, you got to have something outside of the firehouse. And, like, you know, you have the pipe band. Yeah. It's so important to have yeah. something outside yeah. of the firehouse, man. Yeah. I mean, and you got to have a way to decompress. Absolutely. I mean, whether, yeah. whether you think you need it or not, there's going to come a time where everything's going to kind of be too much and you have to have that outlet totally he has the barbecue and yep. he, he's, he's killing it I oh, mean, yeah. his business is it's so good man. his business he's just he's, he's so good doing barbecue <laughs> and he don't worry he'll let he'll tell you he's good at it and i mean that with the utmost just i have a ton of respect for fred he's he's very good at what yeah, he does. he's a good guy he's a good man well listen bro i got some things for you cool. uh, we always like to give out you know okay. these uh decals and obviously you know now that you're on the show you get our patch awesome. that's Thank yours you very bro. much appreciate it and here's some decals Everyone likes decals. <laughs> yeah, stickers and, are fun. Uh, um, make sure I give you an extra one for your son because I'm sure he's going to want that. It. But awesome. listen, bro, thanks so much for coming Thank on you. the show. Is there anything last you, uh, last things you want to say before you're off? You know, I'd like to thank my family. I think, again, like I said, without them, I would be no one. My shift at the firehouse, again, I can't believe I'm going to admit this out loud. They're great. I have so much respect for these guys. You know, I think it's, I think it's a two-way street with that. Um, I think they respect me as well. You know, and, and they're fun to be around. And, and I just, I learn a lot from all of them. You know, whether, I, whether I've said it to them individually or not, you know, they're, they're good men. They're, they're, they're good at what they do. And uh, one last thing. <laughs> you know, Fred came on and gave this guy Stifler a hard time about being a washout and all that. And he's, Stifler's a good guy. He, you know what I mean? He, he can't throw a ball that great, <laughs> but he's, he's actually a very good ball player. And, uh, you know, he, he's, he's a good dude. And, Give him a little redemption from what Fred said. All right. So, so there you go, Fred. He's got <laughs> redemption now. Give Stifler some yes. – give him, give him some credit. Yeah. So. All right. There you go. This is it. Um, I had a lot of fun here. I appreciate you inviting time. me. Thank you. I, I also want to thank Hunting, Hunting Town. Town Fire Department for allowing us to be here. Thank you very much. Look forward to this episode. we got more coming at you. Stay tuned. Take care. <laughs>